morning church friends i hope it's been the best week ever some of you are getting ready to go back to school maybe some others of you have already started and we hope that you have a really really safe year and we're thinking of you and praying for you so we're going to be talking about greed this week and that can be kind of a complicated thing so I'm going to tell you a story in a little bit about a lizard, and maybe that'll help explain it a little bit better. I hope you like lizards as much as my boys like lizards. I think, I think the story will really help to understand. So our affirmation for this week is the spirit of the universe provides all I need, which is a really, really neat thing. If the spirit of God or the universe gives us everything we need, then we don't have to worry too much about anything else. There's a Bible verse and a quote that I want to tell you guys about. It says, Matthew 6, 33 through 34. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, the things that we love tell us what we are. That one's really important. Okay, so I'm going to read you guys a story about the little lizard sorrow. And then we'll have some questions at the end that you can talk about with your grown-ups. Are you ready? This is a story from Vietnam, which is a really interesting country that you can talk to your grown-ups about, but it's pretty far from here. In many parts of Asia, there are little lizards that scurry amongst the bushes and grasses and even up and down the walls of the houses. The little lizard can be heard making a soft tss, tss, tss sound as it runs around. There's a story about why this little lizard sounds so distressed. There was once a rich gambler who had more things than he could ever use, but he couldn't stop adding to his collection of possessions. Instead of buying more things, however, he figured out a way of tricking people and getting things for free. The gambler would challenge some poor unsuspecting person to a bet. I'll bet my best silk robe that I own any object you can name, he might say. Tempted by the thought of winning a beautiful silk robe, the other person would bet something that they owned. I'll bet my fanciest tea set that you don't own a pair of solid gold chopsticks, the person might reply. But of course, the gambler would have a pair of solid gold chopsticks that he would gleefully take the fancy tea set from the loser. He played this game for years, never losing a bet. Everyone in the region learned to avoid the greedy gambler because he had lost something to he had never lost something to his scheme. The gambler had acquired so many possessions that he had to build more rooms onto his sprawling estate. That means house. Workers were busily hammering and sawing when a visitor dressed in a poor rough tunic approached. The visitor stood calmly in front of the surprised gambler and said, you are famous for your shrewd ways. Would you be interested in a bet with a simple man? What could a man like you have to bet? You're begging bowl, scoffed the gambler. The visitor looked deeply into the gambler's eyes as he replied, I will bet the only thing that I appear to own, myself, and I will bet against everything that you appear to own. Do you mean that if I win, you will be my slave, and if you win, I have to give you everything I own? Asked the astonished gambler. That is the most outrageous thing I have ever heard, but I'll take your bet. Now the visitor had to think of some object that the gambler would not have among his piles of possessions. He pondered this carefully before he said, my bet is that you do not own a chipped cup. The gambler laughed and thought what fun it would be to add a person to his collection of things. But his laughter turned into groans of despair as he searched through hundreds of cups, every size, color, shape. He had gold cups, silver cups, crystal cups, even plain china cups, but not one chipped cup. A rich smart man like him would never drink from a chipped cup. He wouldn't allow one on his table. When he realized that he had lost the bet, the gambler sat on the ground, too stunned to even cry. The visitor told the workers to spread the word. Anyone who had lost a bet with the gambler could reclaim their possessions. As everything was taken away, the gambler sat talking to himself. Tss, tss, tss. How could such a terrible thing happen? Tss, tss, tss. All is lost. Tss, tss, tss. How could such a terrible thing happen? The visitor walked down the road with the only thing he appeared to own himself. And where once the sad gambler sat talking to himself, there was a small lizard scurrying through the grass saying, tss, 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 tss. Okay, I have three questions for you. Why were so many people tricked by the gambler's scheme? What did he do that was so good that tricked so many people? What do you think that was? 
Why did the poor man say that he would bet against all that the man appeared to own? What do you think about that one? Do you think the gambler felt loving or happy? Luke 12, 34 can tell us more about that. So I want you to look that up with your grownups. Luke 12, 34. Where was the gambler's treasure? So what this teaches us a little bit is about greed and trying to take advantage of others and trying to take too much, too much stuff so that other people don't have it. It's true that there are other people that are in need all over the world and we have so much more than we could ever need. So I want you to try and pay attention this week about greed. And if you notice maybe people around you are greedy or maybe you can even notice it in yourself and maybe something you can do about it, okay? All right, so I want you to remember the lizard and I want you to remember the two men in this story and think about that with your family this week, okay? Okay, friends, I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.